you're not going to believe this. I, I bought an iPhone just for this. I'm an Android user, but I literally just bought an iPhone to, to record this video. Hey there. So today we want to send mobile push notifications to iOS devices using Flutter. Now you may have seen my Android version of this video. If you have, you can skip ahead, but I'm going to start with the basics of how push works under the hood, which is this pretty confusing diagram here. And then also talk about how we're going to tackle the issue, which is a lot easier. So let's get to it. Now, the first thing you really need to understand is that there is a monopoly on who can send push notifications to mobile phones in the market. So if you're using iPhone, there is a service called Apple push notification service and it's owned by Apple. And it's only that service that can trigger a notification on your phone. And same with Android, it's only Google's Firebase cloud messaging service that can trigger a push notification on this phone. So that's the first thing you need to understand. Any other third party, any other company, any library is going to rely on these two to send, to route the notification to the phone. Okay. The second thing I want you to know is that this is sort of what it takes under the hood to send a notification. Now we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it the easier way, which I'll explain. It uses some libraries and a third party, but I want you to understand how it works under the hood. Let me walk you through it. There is your app running on the iPhone. Your app runs uh, a few lines of code and it's to request for permissions from the user to give them notifications. You've seen this alert before on your iPhone. Is this app allowed to send you notifications? You press allow and then your app has the permission to generate something called the device token. This device token, you can think of it like the address of this device. That's for, it's like a mailbox for receiving push notifications. This device token, remember, is unique to your app installation on that phone. It may change from installation to installation. It will change from device to device. It expires too. It changes over time. You need to take this token and store it on your backend somehow. Because in your backend, when you're sending a notification to this user 10 days later, you need to know this token. You pass this token to APN saying, hey, APN, here's the token. Send this user, send this device, this notification I have. If you're not a backend developer, what people usually do with this token when they're getting it from the device is that you want to create some sort of endpoint where you can take the token and then put it in a database. And it looks something like this. You know, what you put in the database is that you want to say who, which user it is for in your system. And then you want to specify a type for the token because in the future, you're probably going to support FCM or web push that has its own tokens. For Apple devices, there is a mode. So there is production and there's sandbox, and then the token information itself. So you put all that in the database from the app. And then when you're sending something, you pass this token and the message you want to the APN. Now, this is so much work, right? This is confusing. I hate it. I think you hate it. That's why you're on this video. And that's why we have the easy way. With the easy way, we have a service in between. In this case, notification API. Notification API connects directly with APN and also request the user's permission, generates the device token, stores the device token, refreshes the device token. It does everything with the token automatically built in. So all you would have to do is from your backend to say, hey, send this message to user ID or email address. And notification API sort of has figured out all those, all those details we talked about here. So that all goes away. Now that's how we're gonna approach this problem. Now, full disclosure, I work with notification API. I may be biased here, but I do not think there is an easier way to implement push notifications on the planet. So I'm very excited to show you how it works. These orange stars are sort of the steps we need to take, the changes we need to make. We need to create a notification API account, hook it up with our APN, and uh, we need to install the notification API library in our Flutter app, and then we can send notifications and it will all work fine. So let's get started. Now, the first step is to go to notificationapi.com and create an account. It has a very generous free tier, so you don't have to worry about that. Press the sign up 
and make sure you select the right region where you'd want your data stored. Um, especially if you're in the EU and you're worried about you know, GDPR or data residency, make sure to select EU. After you sign up, you're gonna be dropped into our dashboard where you can set up your first notification. So let's do that together. I am going to call this notification maybe hello world and make sure to select mobile push. Now we have our notification configured and ready to go. Make sure to head to the mobile tab and you see a form here. It says Apple push notification and it's to put in a key, key ID, team ID and topic, which I'll explain what they are. Essentially, we've done this part. Now we're, we're heading into integrating Apple push notification services into notification API. So notification API can talk directly with APN. So at this part, you wanna head over to your Apple developer account. Now, something I have to warn you about is that I literally bought an iPhone 16 to record this video. So you better watch the rest. And there is no way to send a mobile push notification, a real mobile push notification without having a real iPhone and without having a paid Apple developer account. Now, this is all in August, 2025. If you're watching this months later, maybe check again on this uh, if they've figured out a workaround for it or not. So let's head to our paid Apple developer account. Here we are. Now, what is this key we're talking about? What is this key we need? The key is sort of like an API key that lets uh, whatever your backend or notification API talk directly to your Apple developer account and do things like sending push notifications through your account. So we go to the key section and over here, you want to create a new key, call it notification API. And enable, make sure you enable Apple push notification services. So this would allow this key to do stuff here. And when you configure, it's probably easier to select both sandbox and production. So you don't have to change this key. Let's go ahead and save and uh, continue. Register. Now you can download this key and you can only download it right now. Okay, I've downloaded our key. Now we go back here and we fill in this form. There's a key ID that you can get from this page right here. The key is the contents of that key file you just downloaded. So you open it in a text editor and just copy paste it over here. There is mine. So what is the team ID? It's this thing here. And there is the topic. It's a very confusing name topic, but it is your app bundle ID. I'm sure if you've done some mobile development, you would know what the bundle ID is. It starts with like, um, usually it looks like a domain in reverse. So get your apps bundle ID and put it here. Now that we have notification API account created, APN connected to that, it's time to work with the app itself. I'm going to create an empty Flutter app and then start from there. I have used the Flutter extension for VS Code where you can do like Flutter new project and create a sort of a blank new project for you that's ready to go. Now, what we need to do is to install notification API Flutter package into this code base and then use it in our code. And how do we do that? You just switch back to notification API dashboard and right here, you'd see the Flutter example. And it explains what you need to do, which is very simple. You need to install the SDK with the Flutter pop add command or however else you manage your packages. You need to import it to the file you want to use this function in. And I'll explain what this function does. And we have this setup function, very simple. And it's already pre-filled with your client ID from your notification API account. What this setup function does is does a whole bunch of things for us. It requests the user's permission if they haven't granted that yet. It generates the device token, it stores it in notification API backend, and the user is essentially ready to go to receive push notifications. So we've got to take this, and in this case, I'm going to put it in the main right here. And for the user ID, you want to use your actual, like the user ID you have in your databases, how you sort of differentiate users. Maybe it's their email address. Maybe you have some unique ID. Keep in mind, if you are in the EU region or in the Canada region in notification API, when you created your account, your code might be slightly different to pass in the right region. Now that we have our app code ready, 
Let's go ahead and run our Flutter application on our connected iPhone. Make sure your iPhone is in development mode and is connected, you know, properly connected to your computer, identified through Xcode. If you haven't done those steps before, figure those out. But there is something you need to do uh, that I haven't covered yet. When Xcode is trying to run this sort of application on your phone uh, and sort of package it and install it, it's gonna sign it with a certain certificate. And that certificate, it's very important that the bundle ID it uses matches the bundle ID you have here. And also it's very important that it has the push notification capability. So we're gonna open our Xcode and cancel this. And you know, if you open your project uh, on Xcode, you'll see this runner here. You click the runner, you go to signing and capabilities tab. And usually for teams who are not doing like production grade apps, uh, they're letting uh, automatically, they're letting Xcode to manage the sign. -in. If you're not, that's a whole different story. You probably have figured this out already, but if you have this on automatic, you wanna make sure you select the right team. And that's, you know, going back to our Apple developer account, you have this team that has all these capabilities, right? And you wanna set the bundle identifier to whatever makes sense for you. In our case, we're gonna do, let's say Flutter iOS example. And make sure you get this bundle ID updated here just to ensure everything matches. Now, next is the capability. So you need to open this capabilities here, right here. And if your list is not as long as this, you're probably on a team that's not paying or not set up correctly. So for example, if I switch to my personal account and I'll open capabilities, this is all I see and there's no push notification there. But if I go to our corporate account, I have a lot more capabilities. And the one we need is push notifications. And you see all this, you may get an error about uh, the bundle identifier not being unique. Uh, again, for development purposes, I recommend just, you know, making this unique to your own. Now I got a certificate that lets me uh, run this on my phone. Now go back to Flutter and run your project again. Now this could take a while. What I usually do is like to do sit down, sit ups, sit downs, push ups. No, I don't know this. You can do squats. Now you may get tired because if you're running this application for the first time, it could literally take like five minutes. So hang in there. I got the application installed on my phone. It's now opening as you can see. And let me see if I can get the screen mirroring to show up here. Now, if it's your first time running Flutter, you'll get this alert uh, letting Flutter access some certain permissions which you can allow. And then there you go. Flutter notifications demo would like to send you uh, notifications. Allow that. And we got our notifications set up on our phone, push token sync, and you can check this uh, by going back to your notification API dashboard. You can go to the users tab here. And in the users tab, I have this username, which I put in my code here. And I can see that push is enabled for them, meaning that their token is synced and they've been seen at this time. So all good. Now it's the only thing remaining is to send this user some notifications. We can go back to our notification and you see uh, a lot of send code samples. You can do it through your terminal or through node or whatever. You can take this code and run it and it will send that user a notification. You could uh, use our templating engine to design your notification, or you could just pass in whatever parameter you want, like title and message uh, in order to pass everything dynamically. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do hello world and mm, for the message to be dynamic, uh, dynamically passed in. So we go to the send tab, we go to the curl. I'm gonna run this in my terminal. In my terminal, I'm gonna change the uh, message I'm passing in to hello world. This is our first push notification to iOS and send this. Oops, 
if you see this error where push notification is activated, but the user's push notification is not provided, you are sending this to the wrong user. Now, over here, you see a two ID. So that's the user ID that's supposed to receive it. This needs to match. The person you're sending the notification to, the ID needs to match with the ID you put in your mobile code as, hey, this is this user, right? So we gotta do that, send. Now I notice I didn't receive this notification. And the reason is that again, this bundle identifier, remember I just changed that by adding my name to make it unique. I need to go here and make sure they match. I'm gonna go back to uh, our curl command and send it again. Now I just got this notification on my home screen. It looks kind of like this with the hello world. And this is our first push notification to iOS, the message we have here. So that's pretty much it. Couple of things to remember, make sure your bundle ID on Xcode matches this, uh, as well as your Xcode uh, capability uh, for push notification is enabled. Over here, you should see push notifications. This needs to be a paid organization. One advice is that don't put this in, in the main because as soon as the user uh, installs your app and opens, they're gonna see this, which is probably not a great user experience, you want to move this to where it kind of makes sense. Maybe they've completed their profile setup or, or something like that. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below or ask us on notificationapi.com. Take care.